All right, guys. This is uh, this is Pastor Ricky Scaparo um, of End Time Headlines. Um, this is uh, this. I want to share my personal testimony of when and how I gave my heart to the Lord. I know a lot of you guys have wanted to hear my testimony, and I've kind of went backwards instead of forward with my calling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to be doing segments constantly. Uh, I really want to, because you know, as a minister of the gospel, it's no longer about us anymore we it's you know we hide behind the gospel you know um, the, the scripture says our our lives are hid in Christ uh, we live to him and um, so all these testimonies you know someone might say why do you do this why why are you why do you waste your time because it's not about me and you know it's like Joseph in the book of Genesis at the you know all the struggles he went through being cast into a pit being rejected by his brothers uh, being sold into slavery, uh, being persecuted, being falsely accused, this and that for 18 years, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, when you get when he gets to the end of his life, you get to the end of the book of Genesis. It says, you know, he said, and for the devil, what he meant for evil, God has used for good, that he may win many into the Lord. Amen. So everything that a minister of the gospel, you know, you may be watching this and say, uh, you know, because I. Frequently we get, um, and I and I do. I read a lot. When you guys send me emails in my account, I read them. Don't think I don't. You know, I may not get back all. You know, uh, right away, but I do read every one of your emails. And I get some questions like, Pastor, why does God allow this, and why does He allow that? And you know, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust, and we can't explain everything. There's good things that happen to bad people, and there's bad things that happen to good people. I mean, look at Joseph. We're just talking about this guy. I mean, this guy was, um, you know, uh, I, I mean, I would love personally, you know, I hope my son Elijah, when he gets older, you know, he has the faith, has the anointing of Joseph. But, you know, a lot of people think that if you have the anointing of God, you're exempt from attacks. But, the, I, and, and uh, uh, you know, my, uh, my, uh, my spiritual father taught me, he says, uh, you know, in fact, it's the opposite because the anointing attracts the attack. Come on, because the brighter the light that you, uh, the brighter the light that you shine, the more bugs that show up. Come on, it attracts attack. So, but it's always, you know, you can't look. It's not how you start, but it's how you finish. What are you gonna do? You know, you either get better or you get bitter. You know, um, so that's the thing with life. Um, so having said that, um, let me. Uh, I want to go. Let me go into uh, my personal testimony. First of all, I wasn't saved in the ch or I wasn't raised in the church. Um, I was around church people. Um, I saw religion growing up, but I never saw a relationship, and that's a big difference. Um, my mother planted seeds of the gospel in my heart. Uh, I remember being at a young age of um, eight, nine, ten years of age, and I would I would get hurt this and that, and my mom would always tell me. Uh, pray to Jesus because he heals. He's a healer. So I, I had a, um, I like to say this, I understood God. Um, I was trying to reach God, but I didn't have the right phone number. And you know, that's that's like the story of millions of people around the world and different religions. They're all trying to call God, but they have the wrong phone number. Come on, somebody. The Buddhists are trying to get to God, but they got the wrong phone number. Some uh, Muslims are trying to reach God, but they got the wrong phone number. Uh, you know, a lot of, that's what false idolatry and false worship is. They're worshiping um, the creation more than the creator. And so what's the phone number? It's Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through the Son. Now, I want to reel back into what I'm talking about. So I was searching for God. I understood that there was a God. I was not an agnostic. I was not an atheist because I knew that there was a creator. There was a superior being. But I did not know how to get in relationship with him. I only understood God through legalism and through uh, through uh, 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 tradition, to the do's and the don'ts. And the, uh, um, it's, it's hard to even explain it, but that's... And many of you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, it's uh, through those methodologies and through those uh, circumstances. So, uh, having said that, I was 23 years of age um, when I was invited to a church service several times, and I kept rejecting it. No, no, man, that's not my cup of tea. No, no. Finally, I got invited to a, a youth meeting. Uh, it was it was uh, it was an event called Soldiers of the Cross. It was an event that was going to happen. And listen, what got my attention? They said that there was going to be food 
Come on, you invite the you invite food and anything, and people's gonna show up. You know, Jesus had more people when he had the bread and the fish. Come on, he had the five thousand, not including men and children. But then when he got down to real ministry, you know, they said he he started out with five thousand. He got down to the real real ministry, and he went from five thousand. Uh, to 70 and then when he got deeper it went from, he started talking about flesh and blood eating flesh and blood he got down to, from 70 to 12 and then it went from 12 to 11 and then he had his inner core of Peter James and John the three so you know God is in the separation division process but that's a whole other message in itself having said that uh, wow I'm getting lost in my train of thought here let's see so I got yes I got invited to this youth service there was going to be food, and again, that attract, you know, I got my attention. There was going to be games, there was going to be basketball, and so I was like, ah, oh, why not? So I was, uh, at the time, I was dating my wife, uh, who at that time was my girlfriend. Um, we were dating at the time. I asked her, I said, would you go with me? I feel more comfortable you go with me. She said, yes. Now, keep in mind, she was raised Baptist, but had backslid, um, and, and I was the heathen that drew her away. Come on. And, uh, but come on, God had a plan. So we both go, and I'm trying to make, I'm cutting a lot of this out for sake of time. But um, the, the man of God stood up. Um, um, and before that, there was praise and worship, you know, and I saw people standing up, saw their hands raised, and, and I saw them with their eyes closed. And, you know, I was getting kind of uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden, there was a presence that entered this room that I've never felt before in my life. And I remember I felt so unclean. And I remember. It was almost like, um, like you, you ever had to, you know, everybody's had these dreams where you go to school, you go to work, and you're naked, and you feel so ashamed, and you're like, you're trying to look for your clothes, and you're trying to get out of it. It's almost like a spotlight shining on you, and everybody's looking at. It. That's how I felt, but it was, but I understood now what I didn't understand then was God was revealing my sins and the uncleanness of my heart, um, but I had been searching prior to that. I remember sitting in a parking lot. I've got to put this in. And I may make this two segments because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in all this. And I really want to get all this in. But I remember before I ever got invited to church, I remember sitting out in a parking lot one night with a friend of mine. And we were, at this time, we were smoking weed. And I was sitting out there. And I remember sitting in the parking lot. And I looked up at the sky, looking up at the stars. And it was a beautiful night. No clouds in the sky, all stars. You could see, you know, uh, you could see some of the planets. You could see, uh, you know, Venus and, and the moon and whatnot. And I remember I looked over at my friend, um, and I'm not going to say his name and whatnot, but I looked over at him, and I said, you know, such and such, there's got to be more to life. There's got to be more to life than partying and living for the weekends, going to the next club, going to the next bar, going out with the next chick, getting the next drug, getting the next high, getting the next fix. Come on, somebody. There has to be more to life because it was getting old. At 23 years of age, I had... You know, I've been I've been doing this and doing this since high school, and it just it got to the point where, you know, you know, there's people out there. You may be watching this, and you're in your 40s, you're in your 50s, and you know, when are you going to get to the point where there's got to be more than life, than the next high, the next drug, the next drink, the next, uh, you know, come on, the, the 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 next adulterous affair, the next fornication, the next, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to fill your void is that that void that that that. That emptiness with and I got to that point and I remember I was asking and I was searching that's what it was I was searching I didn't even recognize it and then as time progressed I went out to uh, I went out with another friend of mine and uh, I remember um, it was almost like um, I, I told him I said you know I feel like something big is about to happen in my life <laughs> little did I know come on that's God that's how God works um, and I, I kept feeling this uh, like anxiety, like expectation of something big. It was almost like you maybe you would call it a um, an inclination or some sort, a, pr a premonition of what's of whatnot. But I, I recognized it was my spirit, the spirit in me, not the spirit of God, because I had not been filled with the spirit of God yet. But my the, the spirit. Come on, how many knows that we were creating the image and the likeness of God when He breathed. He breathed the breath of life in this. So if you're living and breathing and watching this, there's a part of God living in you. So, uh, you know, the Bible says in him we live and move and have our very being. So uh, I was yearning to be in sync or an orchestration or have a relationship with the creator of the universe. So, um, so I, you know, that's what was drawing me and that's what was 
opening my heart to bring me back to the point where I was in the service my and I was feeling God drawing me now the man of God gets up and he starts preaching about hell um, you know I know that's not a popular message but it took a message like that to get a guy like me to the altar because um, I don't think a preaching of love that night would have got me to the altar but anyway this man uh, he went into detail and I'm just going Tim his name was Tim Gribbins, and I, I just I give God the glory. He's a pastor. He preaches out of Kentucky. If you're ever out in Glen Lily, Kentucky, or uh, Linwood area, there's a Church of God of Prophecy out there. And this I love that man, and love his his wonderful wife and family. And I give God, brother, if you're watching this, this this is the fruits of your of of you getting up and obe being obedient on June 2nd of 2000 on a Friday night. Um, Little did you know that there'd be a, a heathen out in the crowd that needed Jesus. And he gave that altar call, and I came running to that altar. And I didn't even look to see if my wife was, or my uh, girlfriend at the time was coming. I ran to that altar. And, I, I, and I, you know, to be honest with you, and this is going to destroy some, uh, uh, some theology and some religious mindsets. I don't remember ever saying uh, I didn't go through the sinner's prayer. I didn't do the ABCs and the Romans road or anything. I laid on the altar and I cried and I travailed and my heart was yearning. You know, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I was, brother, I was crying and travailing so much. There was tears just flowing. And all I could get out of me was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I would just yearn and I'd say, forgive me. And, I, and that's all I said that night. And I came up at that altar about 20 minutes later. And brother, the sky was green, uh, bluer, the grass was greener, the air was 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 fresher. My, my whole life came. And little did I know that the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And the old had passed away, and behold, all things have become new, Corinthians. And I was a new creation that night. I left that, brother, I was, come on, I, I knew I was saved. And it was like everything I was searching for, all the puzzle pieces, the under, I didn't know. I finally got the right number, and, and God picked up, and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And my name was in the book of life, and I filled that void that night. And, and I never looked back, never picked up the drugs again, never picked up the alcohol again, never fornicated again, never did any of that. In fact, that night, my girlfriend and I, we left that night, and... Uh, we went back to the apartment where I was staying with a roommate. We said, I remember, I'll never forget that. We sat on the porch. It was raining that night. And I said, I know what I must do. I've got to follow God. And, you know, keep in mind, I didn't know the Word of God, but I knew then. But I had a relationship to Creator at this point. But I, if, from this point on, I was going to have to get to know Him on an intimate level through His Word and through, through a relationship, through, through spending time with Him. So... I told her, I looked at her in the face, and I remember I said, um, this is decision I've made. I'm following Jesus. Are you with me? And if you're not, then we have to part our ways. Come on, that's how you know you've really experienced. Because I'm convinced there's a lot of people that go to the altar, and they receive Jesus as Savior, but not Lord. And there's a difference, and I don't want to get in all that. They get a head knowledge up here. They make an acceptance here, but it has to come from here. The Bible says, "With the mouth, can, uh, uh, with the heart, one believes into salvation, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation." It has to come. Yes, you have to open your mouth, but it has to come from the heart. One has to believe from the heart and not with the head, because um, there's a lot of people out there that has a religious mindset, but they don't have a relationship. So that's my story, guys. Um, you know. And maybe I'll share a little bit more, I, and, I, and I will. I'll make some more videos about how God, the first thing He began to do was separate me uh, through a process. And you know, you're, and uh, you you may be watching this, and uh, God's called you to separate from old friends, and they're not going to understand it, and they're going to think you, well, you must got all religious, and you're better than me, and who do you think you are? And they don't understand spiritual things. And I want to expound on that a little bit, maybe in another segment that I'll do, so it really help encourage somebody. Because the Bible even says, you know, the Lord says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And because uh, he's calling you into sonship and he's separating you. It's called, you know, it's called sanctification. You know, a word that you don't hear much in the church anymore. And it means to set, to be set apart from the world. Because we're not of the world anymore when we're in him. So God bless you guys and we'll expand a little bit more. And I hope this blesses somebody. Amen.